What's up, you two? Baseball Card Junkies TV here, live. Tops 85401. Titanic Taters. And <laughs> Dude, what's up with the Titanic Taters? But anyways, um, we're going to answer some comments that people have left on our channel and also do a Q&A with uh, people hopping in live here, as well as just general baseball card talk. So if you have some questions, go ahead and throw them out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to take my glasses off until people start commenting. So anyways, uh, yeah, did you want to find some uh, comments on some of our older videos? Sure, but then I won't. Uh, I know one of the ones was, what, uh, what is Opeachy? Someone asked us what Opeachy is. That's true. Yes, they and uh, and they wanted us to make a video, but we're like, eh, that, that would take us 30 seconds to do a video explaining what Opeachy is. But basically what it is, is it's an exact parallel to tops made by a Canadian company. They are not manufactured by tops, but the uh, Opeachy uses the tops design in their cards. They basically, they bought, they back in the day, they bought the design from tops and then produced their own cards yeah. in Canada. So that's what Opeachy is. Um, and I know like Upper Deck has, has the Opeachy brand now, but they use that for like, hockey cards but that's a whole different thing i like this comment so i'm just gonna read it again okay so this right. is a funny comment that was that nate put on our channel oh i don't um, mean it for <laughs> hey what's up snoop so the comment that so the comment is from a subscriber it is it says mike trout really shouldn't be compared to anybody every generation does not have a mike trout to which nate wittily replied <laughs> <laughs> you are correct most generations have players greater than Trout. Yeah. Which that's my opinion at least. It's it's and I think that I would 100% agree with that. Yeah. Um you know if you if you look at even if you just look at you know compare Trout offensively to where Pujols was offensively at the same point in their careers, Pujols was a better player. Offensively, offensively. yes, maybe not all around but offensively. Though yes. he did, I think Pujols did win a gold glove. Yeah, he did. So, but Trout the thing about Trout is he one. strikes out so much. Trout strikes yeah, out so Trout much, and they're trying to three times more than Pujols. Yeah, yeah, and they're trying to compare him to the greats of all time. It's like people get way too excited about where Trout is in comparison to other players that have played the game. Like, and I, I, I mean, feel if you compare him to Griffey, I feel like through their careers to this point, I think Griffey was. A oh yeah, player. hell yeah, he was 100%. a better. He was better defensively. He didn't strike out as much. I mean, yeah, absolutely, Griffey was better. <clears throat> so there's a lot of players. Um, there are even some eras where there are multiple players that were better than Trout, not Barry just Bonds one or two. Better than Trout, of course. Uh, I, I mean, Trout might have been. I, I, I don't think there was a player in the '70s that played the whole decade of the '70s that was better than Trout. The '70s was kind of a, kind That's of a weird, of... weird decade for superstars in baseball. There were no like huge superstars that played the whole decade. There were some guys that came in at the middle or the end of the decade or guys that were wrapping up their career at the beginning towards the middle of the decade. But it seems like there was no player that came into the 70s, played throughout the whole 70s, and was a great player. But if you guys can think of someone yeah, that... definitely... Well, comment. except for maybe Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan's the, the only pitcher. player. But he, he, played, he, he's, he might be the only player I can think of that dominated the whole 70s. Hank, I mean, somebody Hank might... Aaron, no, Hank. Retired. No, dude. Hank Aaron was at the um, wrapping his career up in, in the seventies. Well, he like, but he hit forty home runs his last year. Didn't yeah. He or something? No. No. He no. like twenty. He hit a lot. He didn't hit forty. No. Anyway. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so if you can think of somebody that played the whole seventies, or at least the majority of the seventies, that you would consider better than Trout, comment. Yes, comment, <laughs> and we will we will explore we will, that. Uh, we will explore that. Yes, and serious comments. <laughs> Don't say like like Luke, the only Luke people like, or something. Or like, like, like the only people I could think of would be like Joe Morgan, Rod Carew, yeah, um, Johnny Bench. I mean, those are three guys that played the whole seventies. Carl Yuskremski, but I don't think any of them no, were no, were no, better no, than better. Trout. Yeah. So anyway, Pete Rose. Pete Rose, um, no. No, not better than Trout. No. 
anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's see. So, so Victor Negron says some shade on Trout. I love it. <laughs> throwing some shade on Trout. Uh, no shade on Trout. Not, that's, I'm not saying he's not a great ball player. It's just that he's certainly not the greatest of all time, and yeah. he, he he's not. He shouldn't be in that discussion yet. No, I mean he's definitely the best of this generation so far. Yeah, this you know. particular generation. Yes. But. Well, we'll see. This will be interesting to see how this generation of baseball players kind of shakes out historically compared to other generations. It will definitely be interesting because there are a lot of exciting players, but we don't know how their careers are going to pan out I, I when it's think, all said and done. I think this generation of players is going to cause the Baseball Riders Association, Association of America some sleepless nights when it comes to voting <laughs> for the Hall of Fame. Because you have a lot of players that are going to drive in a lot of runs and, and hit a lot of home runs, runs, home runs and strike out 200 times a year. And it's their crazy. batting averages are going to be down in the 240s, yep. 220s, 250s. Yep, it's going to be so, real interesting. Like um, everybody's still gaga over um, Harper, which he is a great ball player. But man, I mean, it's the guy's hitting, what, 230 or whatever and striking out. Ooh, Mike Schmidt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was was Mike Schmidt better than Trout? I, 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 I was Trout better than Mike Schmidt, and I would say no. Trout was not better than Mike Schmidt. I'm not he saying that Schmidt better was better than, than Trout. Schmidt. I'm not saying Schmidt's better than Trout, but I'm not saying Trout's better than Schmidt. I'd say they're comparable. But that's a good call. But but see, Schmidt came in in '74. See, he didn't play the whole decade of the '70s. So, um. Anyways, I, I would say uh, Mike Schmidt doesn't even qualify for that question just because he didn't play the entire decade. Played the majority of it, but at the same time, you, you have to look comparatively. Trout hits for a better average than Mike Schmidt. However, Trout probably sh strikes out a lot more than Mike Schmidt did because strikeouts were not like kosher in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not um, like they are now. Like I mean, that's like, oh, you struck out 200 times. How many home runs did you hit? 42. Good to go. Yeah. Here's your 100. If someone just flashed contract. up Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. No, yeah. definitely not. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, yeah. So Reggie Jackson Jackson did strike out a lot. I mean, George Brett, but he came in mid 70s. No, yeah. George Brett. There, there's no way he he was uh, he yeah 75 I mean, yeah. Yeah, anyway. off topic, but where would you rank Adrian Beltre among the all-time greats? Just third baseman? He's definitely Yeah, we top have to three. say to say third baseman. Well, would you uh would he be better than Wade Boggs? Would you rate him over Wade Boggs? Yes. How about George Brett? Mm, no. No. How about uh Mike Schmidt? No. Yeah, I would say no. Well, yeah. I'd say they may be about they Defensively, I'd rather have Beltre. Yeah. Offensively, I think they both they're, they're they'd be like right on the same like like very even. The th the book. tough thing about Beltre is he's never had that dominant dominant like stretch where he was the man in baseball. Yeah, he had like one year where he hit like forty nine home runs. Yeah, I think he had one year where he came second place to the MVP behind Bonds. Yeah. But he he's never had. That stretch where he was just like the player, the face of baseball. And right. he's played for so many baseball teams, too. So that's what hurts Beltre. So, I mean, he's up there on, like, defensively. Yeah, but what, I, I think it's just when you look at his, like, I don't know, his career as a whole, he just doesn't have... And he's played for so many teams, but I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how people remember him. I mean, would you consider him maybe overall? I mean, as far as what he does well. Like his Mike Schmidt wasn't necessarily a defensive third baseman. True. Right? Yeah. He was an offensive third baseman. Brooks Robinson was almost a 100% defensive third baseman. Right? Yeah, he was like around a 270 career hitter and had like 260 homers and over 1,000 RBIs, but... He was more of a defensive guy for sure. And what what, what about Wade Boggs? He I mean he never really won any. Gold Wade clubs, Boggs, right? he was like he won a couple of batting titles and he you know he hit well over three hundred as a career. Power, no, he wasn't a power hitter. I think Boggs is one of those guys he could have been a power hitter if he wanted to, 
but he was more focused on, um, you know, getting base hits and he was hitting home runs. Yeah. I mean, if you look overall at his career, I mean, he may, there may be an argument for him being one of like the, one of the best overall third baseman of all time. Someone just commented, Mike Schmidt won 10 gold gloves. Did he? That's what the comment said. I, I, I cannot confirm nor deny that, but who, I'm assuming whoever put that knows what they're talking about. But yeah. All right. Well, if Mike Schmidt won 10 gold gloves, then he would be the best overall third baseman. Yeah, that's like one of those things you don't really remember Mike Schmidt for being a gold glove winner. But man, if he did win 10 gold gloves, that, that's a lot for sure. Eric's looking so I'm looking here. it up right now. <laughs> so, I mean, George Brett would be up there too. Yeah. So, any other comments, uh, guys? 10 any... gold gloves. Damn, man. That's, yeah. All right. He may be up there. As How many the... strikeouts did he have? Strikeouts? Uh, he played in an era 1, where. 1,883. Looks like he probably averaged. Uh, what's about... his walk to strikeout ratio? I don't know. Yeah, because if it's one to one, that's pretty good for a power, you know, a five hundred home run guy. Uh, it doesn't uh, say. It doesn't say. So. So then Mike Schmidt, and then would be the number one overall third baseman. I would say probably. Like if there's yeah. one third baseman that you would want to pick, it'd be Mike Schmidt. Yep. I would say so. And then I'd say it'd probably be Adrian Beltre. Maybe. Yeah, it could very well be. <laughs> Either him. him or George Brett. Or 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 or, if, or Brooks Robinson. I mean, if you're looking for defense and someone that's not going to hurt you with the bat. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, all right, guys. Any other comments, questions? Or, or I guess you could look for other comments, too, on other videos. Um, George Brett won a gold glove. Yeah. George Brett was awesome. I remember him when I was a kid. Yeah, I'm tired of Otani. Uh, hey guys, I feel like I may be alone in this, but I'm a bit tired of Otani fever. I'm really hoping now that he is having his surgery, things will calm down. Well, thanks yeah. for bringing up Otani. So we have to talk about Otani. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Next he's injured. <laughs> right? Next comment. <laughs> I, I think I think Otani fever is pretty yeah. much over at this point. Yeah. So anybody that didn't sell when I said to sell a month ago. You're probably hurting at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have yet to buy any of his cards, and I will never jump on the bandwagon card purchasing. I do not ever. have an Otani card. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I haven't picked one up at all. I and mean, he's a good player, but I mean, he's already well, injured. I, um, you know, the funny thing about Otani was before the season even started, the media was talking about how the Angels were concerned about his elbow. Yeah. So it should come to no surprise that he has elbow problems. Yeah. And now we're going to go move on to another subject. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. Um, so how many people are sorting cards right now where you're watching us? If you're sorting cards, comment and let us know you're sorting cards. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I love I love watching people go live when I'm sorting cards. That's yeah. why I say that. I watch an archived live feed when I'm sorting my cards. That's what I do. Or I'll watch like have like the Babe playing on the background. Oh yeah, yeah. League of the <laughs> or something like that. Sorting. All right. So uh, someone uh, Mike is sorting series two. Very nice. So hopefully you pulled some up. Oh, another uh, Rob Lewis. He's sorting right on. So we got people sorting cards and chiming in. That's awesome. So, dude, yeah, look up, look up some other comments in some of the order. I'm, uh, I'm watching the Nats crush the Phillies. Um, I'm preparing some cards to make uh, maybe a COMC order or something. I didn't see what that said. Thing on the fifteen percent. Oh, yeah. Someone wants to know did they? You know, it's like every time eBay has a fifteen or twenty percent off coupon which no i haven't bought anything every, every single time i don't see anything i want it's not just well it's not just that but it's only for certain sellers sometimes too well today it's for anything for anything twenty five dollars or more any purchase twenty five dollars or more today you is get the fifteen percent off still going or is it it's till nine o'clock our time so um, if you need to buy something, get hour. your get your ass on there and buy something. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have another one eventually. Oh man, the Nats are up seventeen to seven on the Phils. Wow. Um, 
Yeah, man. Brandon Crawford, man, he is having a great season. I didn't see everything he said. What did he say? Um, the damn Brandon Crawford killing the Rockies in the ninth few days ago. Yep. Yep. That walk off home run was awesome, man. So <laughs> that always seems to pop up after I make a major purchase. Yes. That yes. Is true. <laughs> yeah. The 15% off. Yeah. Either after you make a major purchase, the 15 or 20% coupon comes up or the coupon goes away and then something you really want pops yeah. up. So, uh, let's see. If I was a seller, if I was an eBay seller, I'm telling you, I'd be posting shit all day long today, you know, yeah. with hopes that people would be using the 15% off coupon to make purchases, especially big dollar stuff. Because they still get the full amount, right? Yeah, the seller gets a full amount. eBay is the one that gives you the 15% off. The seller gets... <laughs> Hottest 90s cards right now, Jose Uribe, 1991 Fleer. Oh, uh, actually, that's the, dude. That's, the that's a great 90 Fleer. That's, that's a Jose nice, Uribe. okay. That's a great. That's a great card to talk about because I, 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 who is it? Was I talking with you or somebody else about the 1990 Fleer? Who talked about? I think it, it was with like. Snoop. I was talking with Snoop or whatever, but that card is actually selling between five and twenty bucks on eBay. The 1990 Jose Uribe. Why? Because some somebody listed it as a joke on eBay for like three thousand dollars, and now people are actually buying that card for a lot of money. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous. I don't. I, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh man. That 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 card is the epitome of the bandwagon effect. That that card is the epitome of why when a, a hot rookie card enters the marketplace everybody wants to jump on that one card and why the the, the value is like quadruple and what they should be selling for Dude. just look up the 1990 fleer jose aribe here's what see what i'm talking about now that sports betting is legal pete rose should be in the hall of fame as a player but not as a manager uh, his case should be reviewed asap uh, sports betting is give... still not allowed if you are a player it's yeah. still against the rules. Yeah, this whole Pete Rose sports betting thing just makes me want to pound my head into to, to wood because it's <laughs> sometimes I, I like picking topics that I know Nate is going to be. Like, <laughs> I agonize over people talking about. I mean, I mean, I think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame, but it doesn't even matter what I think because the writers can't vote him in. It's not up to the writers. So anyway, I always stress that it's not up to the writers. What else you got there? Eric's looking for comments on some of our older Here's videos. One. I'm waiting. I'm wanting to start put putting some cards into binders. What brand of pages do you recommend and why? I, I oh, you know, them. I'll show. I'll show. That's a great question. Okay. I always buy the Ultra Pro Platinum. Yes, these right here. Yeah. Get the Ultra Pro Platinum, and the reason why is Ultra Pro makes a cheaper um, page where the, the 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 mill of the plastic is much, 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 much thinner. It's almost like plastic wrap. And this is like a four mil. This is a four mil plastic. Yeah. It's a lot more durable. So use these pages, the Ultra Pro, Ultra Pro Platinum. They come in the black box. Yes, they come in the black box. Don't get the cheap ones. You you will be kicking yourself in the ass if you get the cheap ones. Max Jackson said he did not get an alert for this one. Uh, you have to go onto the Baseball Card Junkies page and press the little, alarm, the little bell button. And then you'll be following us and get an alert. A look. So, alerts. so, Max. I know Max is excited. Because SGC has a big announcement. I don't know what it is. And I'm sure Snoop will talk about that on his next, um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not going to tell Snoop what to do. But I know that there's a, a, an exciting announcement with SGC. And all of us collectors, or at least all the people that, that like to collect graded cards are excited. Because there hasn't been anything in the graded card industry that's come out since the lighthouse holder from PSA. So what's the announcement? Do we know? I would, no one knows. I mean, there's like speculation. It's probably like nothing. And they're just doing that. Too. Well, cool. they're got, they're going away from the hundred point scale and doing the 10 point scale. We know okay. that. And there might be something about the set registry through SGC, well, there you go. but we really don't know. We so here's know. one, Rod Sean. Okay. What player rookie would you recommend getting from the 2000s and mid 2000s? 
First would be Albert Pools. Yes. Ichiro Suzuki. Yes. Um, who else would there be? I don't know. I mean, Pools and uh, Ichiro and Pools would be the two big names. But with that, and then like the uh, mid two thousand. God, there's so many like, like players that you don't realize. Whoa. What the rookie cards are? That's almost like in between. Like I don't know. There like, wasn't a lot of rookies. Like like Hall of Fame. Let me caliber. get this. I'll be right back. I get my dog out of here. There wasn't a whole bunch of them during that time period. Well, the problem is that's like, yeah. I mean, those are the two big recommendations. If you want two recommendations, those are the two I would get. Yeah, I mean, any pitchers you can think of? I don't know. When did so? No, uh, not that I can think of. Maybe when when was uh, Max Scherzer? He was he was uh, like two thousand. He was like two thousand eight, uh, I think. Max so there Scherzer. you go. Max yeah. Scherzer would be a good. Oh, well, and of course Clayton Kershaw, you can throw Clayton in there Kershaw. as well. well he was two thousand nine. No, Clayton Kershaw, and Max Scherzer, are the same year, okay. two thousand eight. Actually, right Justin now, Verano. right now is like a freaking great time to pick up um, uh, Kershaw stuff because he hasn't played much in the last couple of years. Okay, so New York um, Yankees fan is telling uh, generally him. only so uh Dean is your guy if you're an informed consumer. Oh, and then he changes to uninformed consumer consumer. Huh. Yeah, Verlander said Verlander. Yeah, Verlander's a good one. He's yeah. And then there's a, like a like you got those Bowman um autograph cards too. But I mean it's kinda like like the mid the, the early to mid 2000s are kind of weird because that's like when they were transitioning from the old rookie card to the one with the rookie card logo. Yeah. And it, there's just a lot of confusion on the rookie cards well, I mean, I for that time frame. That would be my choices. Pujols, Suzuki, Verlander, Scherzer, Kershaw. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good right. ones. Yeah. Like, I, I want to say McCutcheon, but his career is looking like he's not going to be a Hall of Famer. And then... I mean, you could go with like Posey. He's got like some Bowman stuff in there. Posey is probably going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Um. Excuse me. All right, you're looking for comments. I'm looking for comments. I'm looking right. for comments. All right. All right. Let's see what this is. All right, so uh, one of our viewers says their favorite cards from nowadays are Topps Heritage. And, um, yeah, those are nice. Okay, so what do you guys take on Beckett Raw Service? Beckett uh, Raw yeah. Service, uh, <laughs> I I think it's I think yeah. it's just an inexpensive yeah, way yeah. for someone to flip a card without actually having to pay to get it graded. Yeah. So maybe it's good for, like, a Raw collector to not pay extra for um, – for a card to be slab that they're just going to crack out of the slab anyway, but just to know what they're getting. But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I have, I personally have made a personal decision on graded cards. And that is, I don't really plan on ever collecting graded cards unless it's like, a, um, like a vintage rookie card. And then that, that would be, or, or if it's like T two Oh sixes and I like them to be an SGC or like a vintage, like key rookie card. I don't yeah. mind them being PSA, but anything modern, there's absolutely no reason for me to get get graded. I just don't see any value in yeah. grading them. But that's just me personally. I, there's nothing. I, I think that for a lot of people, they really enjoy I mean, having their cards. I would slept. agree for modern, unless you're getting you know PSA nine or higher, or a BGS nine point five or higher. Yeah, you're not going to make any any money on it. Yeah, I don't even think BGS is even like. I mean, they're starting to. I, I don't think the BGS has any collectability, really. I think people are just PSA is pretty much got everybody by the balls now, except I think with SGCs, we'll see what SGC does, but I really do think PSA is, um, is dominating BGS. Oh, well, yeah, but they sold a BGS 9.5 uh, Chris Bryant rookie. Yeah, uh, sepia refractor for two hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. so good. I mean, it's still. Yeah, but it was a nine point five. It was a gem yeah. mint. Like a yeah. nine isn't going. It a, a BGS nine 
is going to sell for less than a PSA 9. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and I think a 9.5, it depends on the subgrades. You hear uh, Nolan, a.k.a. Elite Co. 3, talk about the subgrade factor. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, any more comments on here? Uh, I don't know. Look for some comments. Eric's looking for comments. Yeah, focus is back. Yeah. Sorry about it. Yeah, we have a, we're connected to a Wi-Fi, and sometimes it gets a little slower, so. Yep, hopefully it's coming through good. Uh, a lot of people try to. A lot, a lot of people um, on some of our videos. This collecting body baseball cards worth it. Lots of people have, you know, their plans of, you know, how they're going to make money on their baseball card from that time period. It's, yeah, it's pretty amusing. So, Erica, um, we had a viewer asking, "What have you been doing with, with your collection?" collection? Like, Man, I haven't been doing a whole lot of anything. Um, I've actually kind of uh, toned, like, scaled it down on my collection. I haven't been buying binder cards or anything like that. I haven't actually bought a baseball card in three weeks. Oh my god, you must be yeah, you must like, be chomping at the bit to buy yeah. cards, man. Um, I've just been trying to look for like the right cards that are going to fit into my collection. And actually, I'm going to be scaling back on my binders. And getting rid of like a bunch of stuff that, like, it just doesn't need to be there. You know, I don't need it anymore. You don't need it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have room for it. One day when you get a man cave, then then you'll want it all back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at doing like starting to build a few sets and stuff like that, but then I just kind of looked at it, and there were just cards in in those sets that would make it very unfeasible for me to actually put them together. Yeah. So I'm seeing seeing a lot of people are commenting about what SGC is going to do. And on one of the comments, I saw that they're going to have a scanned image on their site of the cards that they grade, which I think is a great idea. I think in order for card grading to really take it to the next level, it needs to be like the grade needs to come from a, a, a computer system that, that can look at. That, that can look at a very, very high resolution scan and then grade the card unbiased, um, an unbiased grade through a, like, you know, I mean, just the nature of being a human being, you're going to have biased grades. And yeah. People that you, you probably wouldn't even realize it that you're being biased. So, all right. So we got a dog breaking through the dam here. Yeah. I'm going to take her back out. <laughs> Zoe, can't have you in here. Jackson, uh, However, actually, with my collection, one thing I have changed that I am doing consistently is I'm buying, like, PSA, PSA 9 rookies from, like, the 80s and early 90s. And then, like, in the 70s for the rookies, I'm, you know, doing, like, 7s or 6s. Uh, let's see. How, how do I... How do you display your high-end cards... Um, neither Nate or I really display high-end cards. Uh, they're, they're in boxes, in, um, magnetics or top loaders or, you know, whatever looks like it will protect them best. Um, and then Snoop says, oh, card tracking during the grading process along with Going away from the 100-point process. Uh, let's see. Maxa Jackson says a patent has been filed for a machine that does computer grading. That, that's the key. That's the key. That's going to that's gonna change everything if, if they have computer grading. Will it? I wonder if The technology is there, dude. So assuming that that's what they do. Yeah. And it changes it to non-biased computer grading system i would think like computer grading would, would it, be anything from like a like a three on up because when you have a one and a two there's so much that could be wrong with the card that a lot of it has to just be overall eye appeal and not so much the particular damage of the card but i guess my question would be what is it going to they're going to, will they have a different label and will it devalue the cards that have already been graded that's a great question 
That is a great question, and there's no way to know that until we see how it all shakes out. But you could you can only assume that that's what's going to happen. That absolutely. Yeah. And you know, PSA, you know, if SGC, because they they could they could have a patent on this technology, but it's a patent on how they their computers grade Correct. the cards. So PSA could come out with their own patent to do the same thing, but they just have to achieve it in a different way. So Nikola Tesla says he collects all hockey cards, but only vintage and baseball pre-1990. Well, those are great cards to collect. Now, that's an, that's an interesting concept. What's is that? The, is, the, uh, is the definition of vintage going to change as we get further along? You know, because like we're in 2018 now. Uh, well, the thing is, is vintage used to be considered the year that tops, like the last year tops made uh, cards in series used to be where the vintage line what was drawn. And then it, be, so I think that was 73 was the last year that they did it in series. And mm -hmm. 74 was the first year where all cards were in the same series. So vintage used to be 73 and older. And then it kind of changed over time. And now it's like 1980 and over. It's like before the three brands came in mm -hmm. to me. And I, I mean, tech, I mean, I can't see 80s cards ever being vintage just because there's so much available that you can open up that's still sealed in packs. So the only way that there is some vintage too. Yeah, but I mean, like, like 81 through, I mean, there's always going to be sealed packs. So I guess but, my curiosity would be, because you could still, there's an argument for, at some point, calling 80s vintage prior to the real explosion of all the different brands. Yeah. Because in 19... I would say 87 was a big explosion. Like, that's when the cards just were getting well, even, crazy produced. In 87, well, it's 88, you had Score, Fleer, Tops, Donruss. Yeah. And you had, like, you know, your McDonald's cards or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, the, that aren't even legitimately licensed cards. And then it was the same in 89. You added Upper Deck in 89. Yeah. And then 1990 was the same. You added Leaf in 1990. Well, then, that that's just another offering from the Don Russ company, technically. Yeah, but then in 1991, you added uh, Ultra, you Flair Ultra, right? Stadium Club. You added Stadium Club. You added Studio. Yeah, but but here's the thing that you're not adding manufacturers. You're just adding a different brand yeah. within that manufacturer. But that was in in my in my view, that is the explosion of different offerings from yeah, from every yeah. like all the different offerings you had so you could for me i can make i could see an argument argument being made for you know up to about 1990 being considered vintage at some point yeah i don't know i i i think of vintage being you know if you get a a key card from the set from any given set it's going to be worth a certain amount of money like you could look at 1988 tops and Tom Tom Glavin is a key card from that set and that's a dollar card. Mm -hmm. So how could you have a set that's considered vintage when the the most sought after card in the entire set is worth a dollar? And if you're digging through a dollar box and you see one in there, you probably wouldn't even pick it up because it's not ten cents. So I yeah. mean, to me, that's just not vintage. Yeah. So it's cool. They're cool cards. They're de they're definitely. Um, you know, fun to reflect and reminisce when you when you thumb through them, but but they're, 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 they can't be vintage. If Death Leopard and Guns N' Roses can be considered oldies now or classic rock. Yeah. 80s can be considered vintage baseball cards. All right, well that's a different. <laughs> that's definitely an argument against my thoughts on uh, uh, the definition of vintage. Giving you a hard time. Right. Um, so in, in in speaking of the 80s. Uh, do a show on all the cards that were once really valuable but are now cheap, like Greg Jeffries, Jose Felix, and such. Oh, okay. That would be a fun video. Okay, we'll do that video. We've covered it in some points. Yeah. Um, like the key rookies of the 80s or... Yeah. Um, there, there, there is some of that in there, but we could probably do a show just based on that. Yeah. Uh, What's that one say? Hey, did I forgot to ask, did you ever see the video where Pedro Martinez... Does a side by side comparison of Jarrell Cotton's pitching technique? I have a small PC of his cards. I'm hoping he heals well. 
Yeah, Jarrell, uh, uh, we, we, I have not seen that video. I don't no. know if you have, but Jarrell Cotton, he's probably going to be out the rest of the year, and we shall see what he will do next year. And, um, yeah, go A's. <laughs> I think at this point we're we're in this weird stage in, in baseball where it's all about velocity and people trying to throw so hard that they're just destroying their arms. Yeah, it's almost I, I I can't remember who I was talking about this with, but it almost seems like a pitcher has a shelf life of a running back now in the NFL, right? Like when, like when, when you think years. of a running back, you figure five years, yeah, right? Five. five years, and then you just get hit so much that you're done. You can, especially because the players are so big and strong in the NFL yeah. now, and and same thing with pitchers, they throw so hard that. Their arms are just done after a few years, and then well, you get a Tommy John surgery, and either either you you can still pitch or you, you can't, can't. After um, I mean, it's a crapshoot on that. There's only so much torque that the elbow and the shoulder can handle. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually like a like, and and this is like for a supreme like top of the line athlete. There's like a certain amount of pounds per pressure or whatever that the elbow and shoulder can withstand yep. and everybody's built differently. So that's numbers. That equation is going to be different for everybody. Yeah. Based on your body you know? type. Yeah. You know, so you kind of look at the guys that are th like the top guys that are out there are still only throwing. Like you look at Max Scherzer, Jason, uh, Justin Verlander, Clayton Kershaw, although his back is the problem, not his arm. They're still only throwing, they're throwing in the mid nineties. Yeah. They, they don't need, well, you know, to be a great pitcher, you're, you, you, what your what your goal is to is to keep batters off balance for them not to square up on the ball. You're not trying to strike everybody out. You're trying to get the batter to hit the ball, you know, very weakly. Like, so, or yeah, when I say weakly, like not without not, power. You don't want to square up on the yeah. ball. That's their goal is just not square up on the ball. And in, in my but now, it's like opinion, you're trying to blow everyone away. P and I think that's what why there's so many home runs now too. Uh, well, you yeah, have so many people are hitting like so many people are 18 plus home runs right now. Well, that's because the pitchers aren't trying to to get the batters not to square up on the ball. The pitchers. Yeah don't want them to hit the ball at all. But if they do hit the ball, they're squaring up on it. And got plus what the nuke Lelouch is out there yeah. and not enough Greg Maddox is. Yeah. <laughs> God, Greg Maddox, think of what he could do in today's game, man. Yeah. Anyways, um, and I'd be think, interesting to see. Yeah. So back in the day, some pitchers would throw 150 plus pitches a game. That's true. Um, and they were throwing 85 maybe 80 between 85 and 88 miles an hour and throwing like a lot of off speed stuff, you know, they weren't throwing their arms out. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid watching the first time I heard broadcasters talk about pitch count, it seemed like they were talking about it when a pitcher hit about 120 pitches. Mm -hmm. Now you hear them talking about it around 80 pitches. Yeah. And if a pitcher exceeds a hundred pitches, that's like a lot now. And like if you're a if like a pitcher like a, a good pitches per inning average is 15 pitches per inning you want to try to get 15 pitches per inning so you figure at 15 pitches per inning to even pitch seven innings now you got to throw 100 like to to have a good you know amount of pitches per inning that's only seven innings is 105 pitches yeah so if pitchers aren't even throwing 100 pitches that's why you see guys like a good start is six innings, you know, mm -hmm. because that, that would be um, 90 pitches through six if you're averaging 15 pitches an inning. Uh, but, you know, baseball is just changing a lot. We'll see what happens. But it's current. I, I currently, I don't like it. I don't like watching strikeouts and home runs and walks. It's it's weird. To, to, I, I loved watching Greg Maddox pitch. Yeah, he was amazing. Um, and and people put the ball in play, you know, the first pitch, second pitch, little weak ground ball to second, mm -hmm. throw him out, you know. You really had to do something to score a run against Maddox. Yeah. Uh, the guy had, like, so many 2.08 or 2.14 sub-2 years. I, was, I think Maddox had a 76-pitch complete game. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometime in the mid-90s. Imagine throwing a complete game in 76 pitches. 
<laughs> so there's a nuts. debate going on in the comment section right okay, now about right. BBG okay. versus PSA and all the other options that are out there. Uh-huh. Um, what are people saying about BBG? We have the PSI, PSA guys hating on BBG. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, which, personally, I don't mind BBG. I'm going to go um, let the dogs in. I'll be right back. All right, so I, I personally don't mind BVG because I don't look at that as an investment. Um, so for me, getting a BVG 7, you know, for example, I think I I think I picked up a BVG 7 George Brett rookie, which I'm totally happy with because I paid less than I would have with a PS4 or PSA, and they don't look... They don't look super different. I mean, you can tell, you can see a little bit of a, a difference, but they don't look super different. Um, oh, sure. I mean, there's there's definitely some trimmed cards uh, with BBG. Art Reels, am I currently building any sets? No, I am not. I have uh, decided that the sets that I wanted to build uh, were financially unfeasible for me. Are you currently building any sets, Nate? No. Oh, well, I was the 64 Tops Giants I'm thinking about doing. Here, come on, Jackson. Come here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Here, I'll let you hang out. Zoe, you're just going to stab. Let's see. Art Rios. Art, uh, we already just read that. Uh, Nikola Tesla. How could anyone... Grade a trim card, anything but a zero. Uh, maybe not realizing that it was trimmed. That's the only way. <laughs> I, I, well, I, so yeah, Beckett's been known to. Part of the issue, grade, though, also with cards. the vintage cards, like they weren't exactly the best at making sure everything was the same size. Yeah. So, just because a, a vintage card. Is, is smaller than another one doesn't mean that somebody actually trimmed that card. Yeah, well, I think what PSA does is it's a min size requirement, which means yeah. it doesn't meet the required minimum size. They're not, and they're saying that they're, it's not that it's trimmed, but they're not saying that it isn't trimmed. They're just saying that it's a minimum size requirement. Mm -hmm. I've seen that with the 82 Ripken card and the um, Jeter SP rookie card. You see a lot of the min mm -hmm. size requirements on those. Yeah, but again, that was in the, 80s and then the 90s yeah where it was just the way that the manufacturer cut the card yeah um i personally don't mind bbg for vintage cards i'm not going to get it for a card that was made in the 80s oh. 90s you know mm -hmm. but for a card in the 70s 60s 50s or whatever i don't mind bbg huh i think they look horrible <laughs> I, whatever <laughs> i like it's, psa or, or sgc i do like that they go that that beckett or that beckett puts them all the cards in the penny sleeves in the inside mm. that's one thing i do like about beckett where psa most of the time just yeah who there knows there, there was an article that i read that when cards are sent to the hall of fame if they are in slabs the hall of fame takes the cards out of the slab and the reason why is because they feel that the slab itself over time is going to erode the card and they use like some kind of mu museum quality archive um storing system i can't remember exactly what they use to store cards but it was a really 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 interesting article and it, i mean i don't think that the hall of fame is concerned about cards getting damaged in a in a slab within our lifetime they're thinking about you know when we're long gone but anyway, it's just interesting that um, that it's their opinion that what the grading companies use to protect the cards over time is going to actually end up ruining them. But probably yeah. not in our lifetime. That's the thing. The the end of the article, you got to read the whole article because at the very end of the article, they mentioned that the 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 damage is not a concern within any of our lifetimes. But yeah, you, know, you should read that article. It's pretty interesting. I read, part, I read started reading it and then got sidetracked. Yeah. It is a long article, but it's worth reading, guys. You could probably find it on, um, if you're in a lot of the Facebook groups, you poke around on them, and you'll probably find that article on one of them at some point. 
Um, let's see. Nikola Tesla says, I've cut my own cars out of sheets and had them graded. What are your feelings on that? What you mean, like an uncut sheet? Yeah, an uncut sheet or like, um, you know, the box car, box cars, the three panel cars that you would get. In some yeah, boxes. well, t- typically, like if it's a car that was distributed that required being cut, then it'll say hand cut on the slab. But um, if it's an uncut sheet, then if you have an industrial grade cutter, you could probably cut them just fine. I mean, I don't. I personally don't think any card that is hand cut out of a sheet should get. It shouldn't get a mint or a nine or yeah. But like, like, like I know know in the '60s they had the cards on the back of the post serial, and then they had like the cards on the. Uh, like on the bazooka boxes in the yeah. 50s and 60s so there's a lot of hand cut cards out there yeah but should they get a psa 9 well provided that it's documented that they were hand cut why not yeah okay i mean the, and usually psa will say hand cut and then they'll give the grade that's true yeah yeah um so what other questions we got? I, I don't know where I put my glasses. I was sitting there running around with dogs and I put them down somewhere. Now I can't see anything. So I got to depend on Eric here. <laughs> He's my eyes. He's my eyes. My old ass can't see anymore. So I guess the point is it wasn't to create controversy over over hand cut or, you know, miscuts or hand cut or, you know, actually altered cards. Mm-hmm. Right. Um you know what's yeah. weird? I always found weird about like baseball cards is like you could get fine art, like real fine art, and you can restore it, and it's going to add value to that art piece, right? Yeah. But with uh, with baseball cards, if you you attempt any kind of restoration, that's altering, and you could get thrown in prison. So it's just funny how the, but it's but that's what collectors want. That's the that's the. Uh, that's the direction that the industry is going to go. But let's just say like the, the hardcore collectors back in the 50s and 60s and 70s like um, welcomed the practice of restoring old cards. What would the card collecting you know, world look like now with all these like restored old baseball cards? If that mm-hmm. was a practice, it was, you know, like you could invest a hundred dollars in a beat yeah, up vintage restored. card and you know and and get it from like a what would be considered a two up to a four you know i i just i don't know it's just weird how that's probably a dumb comment i'm making but it's just something that's crossed my mind i think that's because baseball card collectors or sports art collectors are slightly insane you know well i think art too (laughs) it's like every art piece is a one of a kind and you know cards aren't so you have the op you know i mean that's probably why uh, trying to restore here. a card would, would be a bad thing. Uh, what's the best card you pulled this year? I haven't pulled a card this year. God, have I pulled? I haven't opened. Yeah, well, I, I don't open packs. <laughs> I guess it, when I broke the 89 Don Russ, I got a Ken Griffey Jr. Card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. We're not. Eric and I aren't pack breakers. And I actually. No. You sure? Up. Oh, okay, we're back. Our, our Wi-Fi. <laughs> I would. I'm just, you know, I'm tired. I have to go out with my buddy Freaking Lee tonight. So just... Oh, fine. All right. Well, have fun helping your buddy move. Yeah, it's like, dude, nine o'clock at night, really? <laughs> it's like, summer, dude. I get it, but it's like, fuck. Dude, you got to use a door stop and squeeze that pillow. There, so, yeah. Thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, what's up? Yeah. What's up? Collecting small pictures of men is the best. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's basically what we do, right? Here's a here's a pickup I got at the LCS today. You don't see too many Rich Aurelia autograph cards. Probably a reason for that. Yeah, well, he, he, you know, he's a... He's <laughs> I like a, Rich. He's one of the better giants. I know Max, if he's in here, he'll appreciate that card. No, it's not a Jeff Kent auto, but it is a Rich Aurelia auto. I don't even have a Jeff Kent auto. Yeah, because there are none. I'd love to get one though. Uh, but they don't exist. He didn't sign. He, I think he has like like one, one card autographed. Yeah. So people are giving me crap about wearing my sunglasses on my head. 
You oh shit! I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> I have my glasses. On. And they're. I bet you someone about, commented, dude. Your sunglasses. glasses. You have to realize we're on the west coast. It's still sunny outside. Yeah, it is still sunny outside out here. We could go live outside to prove it. Yeah. So. Uh, curious, how many card shops do we actually have in our vicinity? Three within. Three within a half miles. an hour. Yeah. We, we Well, there's one that just opened up down the road, and we have actually haven't been to it. And we were considering going there today, but we didn't. But we got to hit that card shop up soon. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, that would be fun. we've been on? 50 um, minutes. Yeah. We still got, I don't know, until Eric burns out. Yeah. Eric burns. I burn. I'm going to burn out. No, Eric burns, right? Eric Burns? Yeah, he played for the A's. B Y R N E S. Yeah. Yeah. He's a funny dude. Uh, Max Jackson says Jeff Kent autos exist. Yes, I know. Max has one. He showed it to me. And it's like numbered to what? Like five or something like that. I'll get one eventually. Shit. I've only seen one certified autograph of him ever. I think he only has one card that's a certain. Like pack pulled certified autograph. I don't think he was a very nice guy. No, oh. <laughs> as part of it. I don't think I care. I just want to get one autograph yeah. of him. That way, I'd have every MV giant MVP autograph card or San Francisco giant. That is, I don't. Says J Square says, didn't he use roids? Uh, oh, no, I don't think Jeff. Can what does that say? Roids. Nate, can you receive a mug? To a message your... here. Oh, message. Yeah, you can send me a message. It'll pop up. We're yeah. Yeah, he's he's asking if Jay uh Jeff Kent used steroids. I personally don't think Jeff Kent used steroids. There's no suspicions that he did. I don't know. All I know is it's it blows my mind that he's not even <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Not even twenty percent on the Hall of Fame ballot, which is yeah. just amazing. I think part of it is they're giving too much credit to ah, Snoop just gave me some inside info. I'll have to check it out. We could talk about that later. So I'm not I'm not gonna be able to uh read that right now, Snoop, but I will later. And thank <laughs> you for sending me the message. So, so any more questions? Yeah, I mean guys, we're taking comments, so yeah. we're trying to um keep up with them, but um questions, ask us questions, comments. So Everybody's pretty active in here. I think most people are like talking amongst themselves and we're just like background noise, yeah, which is fine. Much. <laughs> which is that, fine. Uh, want, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? What? <laughs> Have you ever seen that from Tony and Dumber? Shit. Come no, on. I, I haven't. <laughs> what up, Ray? How you doing, buddy? So I have a joke for you. Okay, what's that? Hold on, let me remember what it is. <laughs> okay. You have a joke for me, yeah. but you don't remember what it is. That's a fucking hilarious joke, man. So. <laughs> uh, let's see. Do you, <laughs> do you have any of the Panini Pantheon die cut cards? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of them of Barry Bonds. Here, I'll actually, I those are cool cards, man. I, actually, I should bust them out and show you guys. I got them in this box. And I got a lot of the Bonds ones. Bonds has a lot because they gave it one for five different milestones. Here, damn, okay. What's green and says, hey, I'm a frog? A talking frog. Come on, man. Yeah, I know. That was obvious. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty obvious. So, yeah, I got that one. So, they had it for, whoops, 500 homers. Do you guys get together... To watch Oakland San Francisco series, any card wagers? That's a great question. And you know what? I don't think we ever have, but you know what? I was talking with um oh god, what is uh um Schmitty the other day. And the Giants and A's are playing, I think it was July 10th. And we were talking about going to that game together. So Eric. I'll, I'll look more into that, and hopefully we can hit up that game with Schmitty. That would be a yeah. lot of fun. What day? I believe it was July 10th. 
All right. I, I know a lot of these look the same, but like this one's numbered to 199. And the only difference, these cards are kind of dumb. But see how that's like a silver autograph or a facsimile autograph right there? Yeah, I have the two Maguires. This freaking one has a gold facsimile autograph and it's numbered to 49. So it's kind of stupid, but whatever. When are you sucker. guys going to write your book on the hobby? Oh, man, I never even thought about that. Um, I don't think that we have enough. Um, You'd sell a whole. I don't think we have enough years. knowledge on the, on the hobby to write a book. Yeah. But who knows? I don't know. We we have enough knowledge to have a fun YouTube channel. I mean, we don't. This isn't like Eric and I don't do this for a living. We just do it for fun. So we've never really considered writing a book. But I appreciate the compliment to write a book on the the top rookie card for each year. Oh yeah, huh? <laughs> by by uh, baseball card junkies TV, and then it'll become a PSA set registry. Yep. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I would consider writing a book, but um, I really, I mean, there's this. I think the knowledge Eric and I have is a, as a, as a collective is like your average baseball card collector, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if it's more or less, but I don't think <laughs> that we have knowledge. It's like um, so off the deep end that we, it would be worthy of writing a book. I feel like I feel like I have average baseball card collector knowledge. Yeah, I think you're probably like when you look at. I th I think you have more knowledge than vintage than you give yourself credit for, and I think you have extensive knowledge of the '90s. Yeah, I, I well, yeah, I, I, I probably have yeah more knowledge than the average person on the '90s. I got a funny story. I was in my LCS the other day, and there's this new guy that's in charge of sports cards, and he's the guy's an idiot. He doesn't know shit about cards. It's 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 hilarious. And I asked him about '90s cards, and he looks at me and said, like, '90s? There's nothing in the '90s. That's all junk." And I was just like, "What is this card shop?" putting this guy in charge of baseball cards or sports cards, if he has no appreciation for what was produced in the 90s. Mm -hmm. He's, I mean, that guy is a complete idiot. So my, my first thought is, please let me look through the collections you buy so I can scoop up all these cards that you, you know, that you don't really know anything about. So, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> like, let me look through your box of like 1993 through. Yeah. You know, like 2000. 2000. Yeah. And whatever yeah I'll, f I'll find some gems i'll in find there. some brilliant gold or whatever <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, let's see how do you guys feel about one of one cards i think that one of one cards are awesome i think that a lot of people complain that there are too many one of one cards but th there's irony in that and what what i when i say that it's if there weren't as many one of ones produced as there are now people would complain that they never have a chance to pull a one of one and yeah. i think that the manufacturers are making what the consumer wants and the consumer wants one of ones so the manufacturers are printing them now that with that being said not every one of one is created equal for example printing plates aren't really worth that much uh one of ones that are part of a rainbow especially a rainbow that has like more than one one of one aren't really worth that much but if you go to like the super fractor those ones are going to those are going to be treated like what it, you would traditionally think it of a looks one of one significantly different yeah or or if you have a one of one where it's a one of one and there's no parallel to that one of one those will typically be worth a lot of money and an yeah. example of that would be the tier 1 bat knob one of ones those are uh, one of the most collected one of ones in the hobby because there is no parallel that is the same as the bat knob card it's that's the only card that looks like that mm -hmm. so those those are the one of ones you want to go after if you want to get a unique one of one but people want one of one so so as collectors if you complain that there's too many of them stop complaining because when you bust open a pack and you get one of these one of ones that are supposedly too easy to find you're going to be happy i have a grand total of like four or five one of ones in my collection very nice yeah i mean every but every collector should have a one of one in their collection uh, every collector should have multiple one of ones that's what makes collecting fun you have something that nobody else has so is the hobby growing you think the hobby yeah it's definitely growing but i don't think it's 
like it's ever going to grow like it did in the late 90s. Here's here's the different avenues in which the hobby is growing. First of all, it's growing because you have a lot of people that are um, wax addicts. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is like the wax addicts serve an absolute wonderful service to the hobby. What they do is they put cards into circulation mm -hmm. and they put cards into circulation at affordable prices. And why do wax addicts do that? Because they open packs, they figure out how much money they lost, they sell cards for whatever they can get for them, and then they recirculate that money into busting more packs. Yeah. So we got to love those wax addicts. We need them in the hobby to put the cards in the circulation. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at the breakers on YouTube, like, they're always selling out. Yeah. Like, and yep. if the hobby was not growing, what they there would be no money in it for them. Yeah, and you know, I appreciate, like, all the creative ways that people have made busting high-end affordable. For example, like, group breaks. I think group breaks right. are great. I think it's a great way for... Someone that doesn't want to spend five hundred dollars on a box of premium stuff. Transcendent with that camera. Yeah, just just to put in thirty bucks and hope they can get what they're looking for. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's great, and I think uh, like people ask about razes as well. I think that's great. You know, it's a great way to sell cards, and um, you know, get your you know, and give everybody a chance to get a really expensive card for cheap. I don't do razes. I don't do group breaks. I don't bust wax, but I think all that stuff is. Uh, um, avenues in which the hobby is growing and it's helping build the hobby. Uh, did you ever collect Jose Fernandez cards? I had a PC of his. And I just wanted to know if you could give me some good news about him, worth anything now. Uh, I never PC'd Jose Fernandez. I had a couple of cards of his. Um, I don't think his cards are worth anything now. Uh, and I agree with Eric. I think that if you were going to sell the best time, I mean, I hate to say this, was the week he, the week, week he passed away. A lot of people were chasing his cards down for, you know, emotional reasons. And I think as soon as the truth of his, the situation came out, well, wasn't he like, uh, he was under the influence? cocaine and yeah, under he was, the influence yeah. of alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. He was so that hurt. Yeah, I don't think Jose Fernandez cards are worthless, but they're not worth. I mean, if I I think that if you collected him and you still have his stuff, you might as well just keep collecting them because yeah. you could probably pick his stuff up for way cheaper than the cards that you currently have. And if you if you appreciated him and you enjoyed his career, then you might. I mean, just keep collecting them. Why yeah. Why would you stop? Right? There's no reason to stop. He He would have been. He would have been a great pitcher if his arm, you know, provided his arm stayed healthy. Yeah. We talked about that earlier. <laughs> um, Come on, eyes. The more one of ones they produce, the more they push down the value of real one of one of ones. Well, not really. All one of ones are real. Yeah, I mean, not really. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, sure, the the more one of ones that are out there, yes, it's going to devalue. I mean, there's going to be less demand for a one of one because you have different options on what one of one you can buy. But if you're in this hobby to get a one of one that's worth a lot of money, maybe it's not the right hobby for you. I mean, it's one of ones are cool. And if we have them in our collection and it's the only one out there, we can look at it and say, this is the only baseball card that this manufacturer produced of this card. And I have the only one. <laughs> I mean, it's just cool to have a one of one. Ray from Philly says, Chris Davis, Hall of Fame. No. Oh, come on. <laughs> huh? Which Chris Davis? Ne neither, neither one of them. Yeah, no but way. Chris Davis on the A's, no, he's not Hell a Hall no. of Famer. Uh, he's a good player, great player, great power hitter. No. But he's not, not a Hall of that's Famer. That's not a definite, yeah. That's... Uh, let's see. Uh Which is better? Which is better, Topps Chrome or Bowen Chrome? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. But okay, a lot of people in here want to know like investment advice, and uh, you want to go Bowman Chrome because it's all about the first Bowman Chrome card, autograph card, or superfractor. Mm -hmm. But Topps Chrome is I don't know. Bowman Chrome is gonna you know you're gonna make more money off Bowman Chrome. But there's more risk in it as well. But yeah. 
I don't know. You just look at like the even like the base like um, parallel refractors and stuff on Bowman Chrome on on the right player. Those cards are gonna sell for for a lot of money. So uh, let's see, Edmund Dobry. Think I assume he's talking about Don Mattingly. Think Donnie will think Donnie will get the vote his last year of eligibility. Doubtful, dude. Don Mattingly is so un. Like he's so far as a player, he is not even I mean, close to being a Hall of Fame. Alan Trammell got in. Yeah, but but Alan Don Trammell. Mattingly is not a Hall of Fame baseball player. I don't know why everybody. I mean, Will Clark had an equal career as Don Mattingly, and no one complains that Will Clark's not in the Hall of Fame. It's just because Mattingly played on the Yankees. Yeah, I mean that's why people. They I don't know. It's just he was a. I, maybe people think he's a Hall of Famer because the '84 Don Russ kind of. Fueled the hobby. It, it, it probably even fueled the he won the, a the batting titles. One batting a lot of title. Gloves. Yeah, he won an MVP. But I mean, he he definitely that '84 Donruss card is like one of those big cards from from the '80s and one of the cards that kind of catapulted the the hobby. But it doesn't mean that he's a Hall of Famer. It means he was a Yankee that was popular when the hobby exploded. Really. Yeah. So uh, how about the A's this year? They're doing good. Yeah, they're. I think they're a surprise, and they have a good shot at making the postseason. Yeah, I think that they have a good team this year. Um, they have decent pitching. I mean, they knock in runs like it's going out of business. So. Yep, the A's always seem to find a way to win on a budget. <laughs> yeah. Be competitive on a budget. But I don't expect, I mean, if they make the playoffs, I don't expect – at least a third of the players that helped them get there to be on the team the following year. Yeah. Um, uh, Donnie could have been a Hall of Famer had he not hurt his back. Probably. Probably so. Uh, that 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 is, I would say, that's a very very good analysis. Uh, any Sosa or McGuire cards worth buying nowadays? There's always Sosa, Sosa and McGuire maybe, cards worth buying. Sosa autograph cards, definitely. Oh yeah, he didn't sign that much. So, um, but I mean, you got all those like rare '90s inserts of Sosa and McGuire. Pick yeah. them up, man. I mean, those are great cards to have. They both were on a lot of sets, like in '98 and '99, obviously because of the uh, big home run uh, race. I mean, McGuire, the '85 tops Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that card keeps going up and up and up. Yep. Yeah. All those Tiffany, like mid '80s Tiffany rookies, are just going through the roof right now. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> how many more years does Billy Bean have? I have no idea. Billy Bean have as what? As an executive with the A's? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> uh. Now they're talking about who Chris Davis was traded for. Wow, we're really behind on that. Oh, I know. That's because your your shit keeps. <laughs> but these guys aren't behind because they're wow. commenting as we go. I think Steve Purple GT's in the house. What's up, buddy? So, uh, who is the non-star Giants or Athletics players collected by you fellas? Non-star. I mean, for the A's, I collect Chris Davis, but he's... Matt Olson, and Matt Chapman. Yeah. So, and for Are the... We talking current players? Yeah. Like, like I, I mean, I like to collect, like... Um... Nick Swisher. Oh, yeah, you like to collect Nick Swisher. <laughs> Josh Reddick. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So, I mean, non-stars, I mean, there's a lot of guys... I mean, but they were stars at one time. That's the thing. Like, I, I got, yeah. like, a lot of Hunter Pence cards. I got a lot of Rod Beck cards. I got a lot of Jason Schmidt cards. But, you know, I mean, at one point they were stars, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Angel Pagan, that's another player I have a bunch of cards of. Mar Marco Scudero is one I like to collect. So, well, they uh, all Pablo kind of Sandoval. Their, they all like kind of collect. had their moments, right? Yeah, I like to collect. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. Are there, I mean, maybe not... Players that we collectors would consider stars, but players that I enjoy collecting that had their moments at least. Yeah. So, uh, Cody Ross, that's another guy I like to pick his cool stuff up when I can find it. JT Snow. So, um, uh, is Bryce Harper you... a good investment? 
I'd say probably. Yeah, I mean, he's so young, you know. I mean, how old is Harper? Is he 26 or something like that? Yeah. So I mean, that. so I mean, he's he when his career is over, the numbers are going to be there. I know he's having a bad season this year in terms of batting average, but he's just so young. He's so young. Is he 25 really? If Harper's only 25 years old, yeah, I mean, he's a great he's great to I mean, if he's only 25, I thought he was 26. Yeah. Man, he's so young. Look at what he's done he's at twenty five. Yeah. So that's a that's a thing. Like a lot of baseball card collectors, this is like baseball card collecting mistake one oh one. Is if you're if you're looking if you're looking to collect players that are gonna be great, don't collect players that come up when they're twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight years old and you know, go out and you know, invest in all their rookie cards because they're, it's maybe they're great, but they're not great enough. They're, they're too old to compile statistics to become yeah. a Hall of Fame player. Yeah. Like I think Jose Abreu is in a great example. He came up when he was like 26 or 27 in uh, what, 2014 uh, with the White than, Sox? He was younger than that. Uh, he was kind of old though. Oh, he was kind of old. I thought you said Jose Altuve. Oh, no, Jose Abreu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like if, if the player is just too old to compile you know, um, Hall of Fame stats, like, don't get too excited over them. Well, I mean, then you throw in Aaron Judge. Yeah. But, I mean, like, I remember when Josh Hamilton was real hot, like, in 2008. And he, and you know, I mean, he came up with, through the Tampa Bay organization in 1999. Then he hurt his back. Then he got hooked on drugs. So, by the time he actually made it back, it was like eight years later, and the guy was, like, 28 years old, and everyone was going ape shit over his cards. But it's like... The dude's 28, so if he can stay off drugs and play for 10 great years, he's still never going to be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Of, of course, the drugs caught up with him again, and that I, even shortened his career even like, more. Like, I have to institute, like, the five, four or five-year rule. Like, until a player has been in the league four or five years and has consistently put up numbers... Like, it's just not worth it for me to invest money in his cards. Yep, you found it. Yeah, I mean, well, like, definitely, like, the rookie season, you'll see a player, a lot of times a player do really well. Mm -hmm. Then the league will adjust to that player. And a, a lot of times, that's why you see a player their second year, they won't, won't do as well as a rookie year. Yeah. But if by their third year, they're as good or better than they were their rookie year, and they continue to maintain or or even improve on that rookie season throughout the career, then then you got a player to talk about. Yeah. And then of course you got a factor in health and age. Yeah. So I a player that comes in at twenty five like Judge. 20, Judge 25, came in at twenty five. Twenty six. Yeah. Virtually has no chance of being a Hall of Famer. Uh well no, you got a chance. I mean Ichiro came in really old. He was like twenty six or twenty seven as a rookie. Yeah, he was a freak. Yeah, but he was also Ichiro was small build, so you have less chance of injury. And how old is he now? He's like forty two. About forty yeah, yeah. But he Ichiro is kind of an exception to the rule as far as age. Yeah. But he's not getting in the Hall of Fame for anything spectacular. He's getting in the Hall of Fame because he got a lot of base hits. Like the funny thing, when you look at Ichiro, his on base percentage isn't super impressive compared to his batting average. Mm -hmm. His on base, per I mean, he never walked. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Ray says, uh, that's what I do. I, I assume you're talking about the four or five year thing. Um, I wait till the player's fifth year. That's why I was suggesting Chris, Chris Davis. But Chris Davis is 30 years old right now. Yeah, he came up pretty old. So he yeah. came up older. So even though he's been in the league for five years, um, and this he's is just not going to compile the numbers offensively to get in the hall of fame plus, plus he strikes been, out too much he's also been moved to dh now yeah so now you have a dh that strikes out 200 times a year yeah yeah so and uh, came up at age 25 yeah uh he was 27 when he came up. yeah i mean he was old man i mean he's like an exception to the rule you don't see you're i think hoyt wilhelm is another player that came up at at like 27 years old and is in the hall of fame so there's like two players that i can name in the history of baseball that came up at age 27. I mean, he you know, sure like, will be in the Hall of Fame, and Hoyt Wilhelm is in the Hall of Fame. also have a year where he had, like, 260 hits or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then, of so, course, you got, like, Jackie Robinson. Yeah. I don't know how old he was, but I'm assuming he was 
over 27. Yeah. And and you know like but that that's different though. Like the Negro League players, that's a whole different ball game. Do you think Martinez is going to make the Hall of Fame this year? Edgar Martinez, unfortunately, yes, I do. And I say unfortunately because I think he's making the Hall of Fame because people are campaigning for him to be in the Hall of Fame. I don't necessarily think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and the reason why I'll tell you the the reason why I don't think Edgar Martinez should be a Hall of Famer because if McGriff isn't in the Hall of Fame, who played first base the majority of his career and put up comparable numbers to Edgar Martinez, why should Edgar Martinez be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah. And he's a DH, so I guess I don't really have. I mean, if he makes it, I don't really have a problem with it. But when I think of Edgar Martinez, I don't think Hall of Famer. He never dominated any like time frame. He was never a dominant player. He was always a great player. But it's not like when people said, who's the face of baseball? At any given time, even if it was for a couple of months, no one ever said Edgar Martinez. Edgar Martinez, for the majority of his career, wasn't even the best player on his team. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you would think that a Hall of Famer for at least one season at some point would have been the best player on their team. At least, I mean, of course, you're comparing, like, position player, okay? Not necessarily, um, you can't compare him to, like, a pitcher. Mm -hmm. But anyways. Well, so, so, and then somebody mentioned Harold Baines. Um, He's just... I think no for the exact same reason you just gave for Edgar Martinez. Yeah, Harold Baines was He was a, a great fan, player, Yeah, and he was consistent throughout his career. And he had a long career, too. Yeah. Harold Baines played forever. But then, then, then you put Harold Baines, and then you got to say, well, is um, oh God, why can't I think of his name now? The guy that played till he was like forty eight, Julio uh, Franco. Yeah, is Julio <laughs> Franco a Hall of Famer just because he played for twenty five yeah. years? You know, no, he's uh, not a Hall of Famer. Do we eventually run out of Hall of Famers? <laughs> no, because we don't run out of new players being circulated onto the ballot. So of course not. So it's funny that he says that because this kind of ties into what we were talking about earlier with the current state of baseball now, how strikeouts are not considered. Yeah, but then you're going to be comparing that to era. Adjust, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, then you compare the era. Uh, let's see. It'll be called the strikeout era. What's uh, it, the three result Fred era? Fred McGriff. Is Fred McGriff a Hall of Famer, in my opinion? It, yes. No, well, no, Fred McGriff isn't a Hall of Famer because he's not in the well, Hall of Fame. Be. Should be in the hall. Would he get my vote if he was on the ballot? Yes. yes. Is he a Hall of Famer? Obviously not. He's not in the <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, will we have another 300 game winner in our lifetime? No. There's no way. Pitchers I mean, don't pitch enough pitchers. Innings. I mean, now it's almost a standard in the game that five innings out of your starter is acceptable, six innings is great, and seven innings is you're a Hall of Famer. Right, the broadcasters are going to talk talk about you like you're going to be on the next ballot. You're a inning eater. Yeah, I mean, so there's no way because bullpens are getting, the bullpen is getting half the decisions now. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if you're a dominant starter, right, you get what 32 starts a year, let's say, right. Mm -hmm. The bullpen's going to get half those 32 start decisions. So now you get 16 decisions a year, and if you win let's say 80% of those 16 decisions, then you're at like 14, 15 wins is like a great, great season. Yeah. So how are you going to, you'd have to pitch for 20 years and average 15 year, uh, uh, wins a year to get to 300 wins. Well, they're using uh, all kinds of different metrics now to determine, you know, who's going to win the Cy Young award. Who's yeah. Win the MVP. So, yeah. Um, especially Cy Young, like, Max Scherzer won last year, right? And he only had like 14 wins, 13 yeah, wins. Yeah, but, but because... But he led the category in strikeouts, whip, hits per nine, strike, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the bull, bullpens get way too many decisions. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a starter, right, and, you're, and your offense doesn't provide you any run support, and you pitch, let's say you're a Scherzer, and you pitch six and two-thirds innings and give up one run, and your team hasn't scored yet. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I mean, that that's going to happen a lot too. However, I do think that that it will they will adjust for what is considered a Hall of Fame pitcher. Well, I they have they're to. Gonna yeah. see, they're going to want them to have one side at least one side young award. 
200 wins, 3,000 strikeouts. But they might look at innings, too. Innings pitch. Yeah. Um, a strikeout per nine. I don't know what they're going to look at. But Rivenwood yeah. says Judge will see the Hall of Fame. I do not think Judge will be a Hall of Famer. You know what? Um, I don't think he will either mm -hmm. because he's so big. That's what the thing they see. The people, Judge is right now, he's like Don Mattingly. Okay. So, like, if you were to ask me in 1986, is Don Mattingly a Hall of Famer? I would say, oh, yeah, he'll be in the Hall of Fame. Or same thing with Will Clark. Will Clark in 1989, is Will Clark a Hall of Famer? Oh, hell yeah, Will Clark's a Hall of Famer. You ask me in 2018, is our 20, yeah, to this 2018. Max Jackson's Aaron Judge will visit the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, no, he, there's no way Judge will ever be a Hall of Famer, and I'll tell you why. One, he, his rookie year, the year he hit, what did he hit, like 52 homers or whatever? 52. Yeah, whatever he hit. He was 25 years old, and he had three career home runs before he came in the league. So at the, at, when he was 25, when it, he had 55 total career home runs, right? After the age of 25. So if so, let's say he plays. And so Judge is 6'8", 280 pounds. That body is going to take a beating. Just the size, his, his the mass of him, he can't play at the level he plays at now for a, a long period of time because he's so big. His body's going to break down. Aaron Judge's career will probably be over by the time he's 36 to 38 yeah, years insane. old. And his decline is going to start when he's about 34. I'm just telling you guys, the big guys, you look at Frank Thomas, you look at all the real big guys, they can't play into their late 30s and, and into their early 40s. They're, they're just too big. They're, they're too big. Their bodies can't take it. I, I, so Judge is going to end up with, he might be in the 400s as far as home runs. Yeah. But his strikeouts are going to be so high, and um, yeah, it's just I don't think he has enough if, time to compile the numbers. If he could play till thirty-seven years old, that would give him twelve, 36, thir thirteen years full old. seasons. If he can somehow manage five hundred home runs in that time period, in thirteen seasons, he would be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, how many players have put up five hundred home runs in their first thirteen seasons? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. When did Mark McGuire hit? Well, McGuire hit more. He got to 500 home runs in the least amount of at-bats, yeah. but he missed two or three two seasons, seasons with that heel injury. Yeah. So he, he was older. So. Anyway. Yeah. I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't see the, 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 the I, Aaron Judge, just, to, just to be fair, he has a 10% chance of being a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I don't see him being a Hall of Famer. Yeah. No way. No Maybe way. If he could get 400 home runs, have a 300 career or like 290 plus career batting average, win an MVP or two, he'd probably be in the Hall of Fame. But it's going to be tough for him to win an MVP. Uh, he's got to hit more than 400 home runs, dude. One thing, well, if you look at 400. Nah, 400 runs, 300, ain't shit, dude. 300 400 batting 400 average. 400 ain't shit. A couple MVPs. He's never going to hit 300 career wise. Never know. He's too big, dude. Yeah. He's just no. He's not a. He's not gonna be a. He's he's a, he's he's a fun player to watch right now, and he's dominant right now. But he's. I just don't see him being a Hall of Famer. Okay, what else do we got here? Five thirteen seasons is three thirty eight home runs a year. Well, thirty eight times ten is three hundred eighty. Yeah, so that's about right. Yeah, thirty eight home runs a year for thirteen mm -hmm. seasons. But you got to figure. You know, after 34, he's going to decline. So he might be hitting 32 instead of 40, 45 home runs. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't think I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I mean, hey, I, hey, I'd love to be wrong. I, I'd love to be proven wrong. Bink Scott says the Hall can make adjustments for future, can't make adjustments, I assume, for future players because then you're screwing past players. That is a slightly incorrect statement because the whole part of the voting for the Hall of Fame is comparing players against their peers. Yes, against their era. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's not an accurate. Yeah. That's not accurate. Um, what else you got there? Uh, now they're debating Judge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Any Judge is a fun debate. Don't get me wrong; it's fun to debate Judge. I think it's a great topic. Yeah. So. 
any case for Joey Joey Votto to become become a Hall of Famer? Um, if Maybe. Joey Votto becomes a Hall of Famer, he's gonna get he would be one of those like a Tim Raines type Hall of Famers or 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 Jim Rice, you know, at the very tail end of the uh, writers. And you know what? Joey Votto might be a Hall of Famer, but it's going to take a long time for him to get in. He he certainly won't get in early in, early on on the ballot. I think his MVP was a fluke season, personally. Uh, Votto's good. He did really well in 2017. He's a good ball player, man. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a good ball player. I don't like him as a person. Well, I mean, but see, <laughs> you don't get in, voted into the Hall of Fame. You don't get voted into the Hall of Fame when you're messing with kids faking like you're going to throw him a foul ball then yeah well <laughs> i mean i i look at the player as a player not whether they're a douche or not when i'm deciding whether i think they're a hall of famer yeah because if if the, we, we were going by that then if like were you a douche if the answer is yes you're not a hall of famer then ty oh, cobb would not be in the hall of fame there's a lot of players that wouldn't be on the hall of fame ty cobb that wasn't would be considered the... a douche back then oh yeah what he yeah. did was almost completely acceptable no uh, he was a douche for sure <laughs> <laughs> anyways any other comments uh you want to talk about uh, uh, what do you guys want to talk about eh? I, I think we're doing we pretty good. And I think we're getting to the point where I have to get heading home. So. Okay, well, let's take two more, uh, two more, and then we're gonna kick. We're, we're gonna cut. Is the fuck there up a best way? Is there a best time to buy cards on eBay? We already covered that. Yeah, um, there's always. You know what? The best time to buy cards on eBay right now is when they're offering fifteen percent off. <laughs> <laughs> so today was a great day to buy cards. Uh, on eBay. Like during the middle of the week. Or and and in the off season are the best. Time yeah, actually, yeah. There, there. A lot of listings end at like two o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. or, or a poorly. Uh, I think there are there are techniques to finding poorly listed items and capitalizing on that. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with like the time of year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh. Okay. So we're gonna take one more question and then we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Well, thank fine. you, everybody. It was so, a good time tonight. So the 3,000 Hit Club will be changed to the 2,000 Hit Club. No. no. <laughs> 3,000 Hits is still a completely attainable um, milestone for position players to hit. Yeah, I mean, you got you got players entering the 3,000 Hit Club almost every season. Well, you had Ichiro, Beltre, uh, Alex Rodriguez... Derek Jeter, just just mm -hmm. in the last uh, four or five years, you've had uh, four guys, four or five guys get in. Yeah. So that's that's not that's not a tough thing to do. Well, I think we're we're probably going to see a little stretch where we're not going to see anybody. I, I think that we'll the 200, seeing... 200 wins or two hundred and fifty wins will be the 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 old three hundred win plateau. Yeah, but that's but, just but not not three thousand not. 2000 hits yeah that's 3, just because of how pitching is now yeah it has yeah. nothing to do with um anyway yeah yeah so anyway you want to do one more or is that a wrap uh do something do something that'll give us a, a minute or two <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> nick marcakis oh, that's funny <laughs> <laughs> i don't know there's not much popping up anymore. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to call that a night, guys. And uh, thank you, guys. Favorite card year. Okay. Favorite, Favorite card, card year. year? I would say 1998, just because I'm a 90s insert junkie, and there was just some great shit that came out in 1998. And that's the year I got back into the hobby. What's your favorite card year? My favorite card year would probably... He don't know. I don't know. He don't fucking know. Favorite He's a card junkie. Year, I'm going to say 1993 because of finest refractors. Very good. All right, guys. Right. Thanks for hopping on. It was fun. And as always, happy collecting.